Hey guys, Matthew here, and today I want to bring you guys a video on how the 0.0001% of the population or the player base make some ridiculous amount of currency which can make even this stack of 5,000 exalt look like pocket change. And no, I'm not exaggerating. These people can make some actual ridiculous amounts of currency as I have in the past. Because yes, today what I'll be talking about is a strategy that I have used myself and is basically going to be duping. Obviously, we're talking about legitimate duping. We're not talking about, you know, some weird uh, actual server crashing, duping, reroll back thing that would get you banned. We are talking about a legitimate method, which I'll be going in detail with. Now, before I start the video, I want to really dial this in, but put your pitchforks down. I will be showcasing some of these crafts, which other players are typically abusing right now. But I don't want you to get you guys to go hating on these players or anything like that. Uh, this video is made to be informational and the fact that we I'm going to be using examples from Some other players in their current crafts is not because I'm exposing them for doing anything wrong It's just because I need some examples in recent times, right? So I would just want that to be very clear. I'm not trying to make this into a witch hunt So let's get right into the video and talk about where this whole thing about duping stems from so I think the first public uh, place where it was ever really mentioned was this Reddit thread here called How I Duped My Way to an Alt Art Alpha's Howl Thanks to Bessier Recipe. Essentially, this guy was duping foils, I believe, if I remember correctly, and got all the way up to an alternate Art Alpha's Howl, which back then would cost, I believe, it was something like 14 mirrors. Now they have almost tripled in price, if not more since then. But uh, needless to say, this guy, I believe, was the first person to at least put it out publicly what he was doing so huge thanks to him because he made me a lot of currency my first big my first big league in for in, in terms of currency generation was uh legion in legion i made over 30 mirrors in the span of a month and a half using this strategy which i'll be talking about today i've already documented this uh you can see that i have a video that i made a year ago back when i was in the Missed of using this strategy because I, I thought it was broken and I really wanted people to know about this uh, But I was a very tiny tiny content creator back then and the video didn't really Pick up at all. Uh, so I think it stayed under the radar still now following this league in blight league There was a new base that was uh, available back when everybody played minion in blight league people were playing the cyclone the cyclone minion build or whatever um, I can't exactly remember what it was, but there was this temple staff with minions deal double damage, with the minion damage, with plus one socketed gem. And my buddy was the first one to actually make that base. Um, and he made 50 mirrors in the span of the month, or of the league, sorry, of the Blight League, uh, abusing the absolute crap out of this exact mechanic here, the duping mechanic. So this is why I want to talk about, this is what I want to talk about today. And I'll be giving you guys essentially... Um, a rundown on how exactly these are made and I'll be giving you guys one example of one base and how to go about making it the different methods you have of making these bases and whatnot uh, using harvest or using the old method which was imprint spamming don't worry if you don't know what that is I'll be explaining all that in the video uh, so put on your tinfoil hat and uh, let's get to it this is going to be a pretty in-depth video. There's going to be a lot of uh, very technical things, a lot of small details, but all of them are very important. So pay close attention if you want to even attempt this going forward. So let's get right into it. The strategy is all about this one big boy here called the Chrysic Kimmeral. This is a beast which allows you to put a save state on your item. Now, when you put a save state on your item, you can essentially do anything to your item. This can only be used on a magic, a blue item. Um, which means one or two stats only uh, and you can do anything short of either vendoring the item valing it or deleting it outright and you can get it back to what it was during its save state that means that you can scour it alt spam chaos spam use any sort of currencies on it and you can always just bring it right back to what it was now this beast is going to be used in tandem with another beast called the Phenumal Plague Arachnid. Phenumal Plague Arachnid allows you to split an item in half. Now when you split an item in half and it has an odd number of mods on it, which means like three um, or five, the item that drops on the ground, which means the new item created, which has a new brand new item ID, which I'll explain again in a second here, uh, is going to always have the more mods. 
So if you split a three mod item, the one that drops on the ground will always have two mods. If you split a five mod item, the item that drops on the ground will always have three. It's pretty simple, but it's a very important detail when we get to how to actually dupe. So the way that we do it, dupe an item here, and I'll be showcasing basically or explaining with the ones that I was using in Legion League, the plus three range foils, I would take a base like this, which by the way is nearly impossible to make, but I'll be explaining later on in the video how these bases are made. Uh, now it will be your own job though to figure out which bases are the most profitable, what you should consider uh, and whatnot. I'll be showcasing one of them and explaining exactly how it's done, but I'm not gonna tell you guys exactly every single base because this video would literally last forever as there are very quite quite a few of them. Let's just put it that way. Um, so we would take this base here called the Merciless Jewel Foil of the Essence and to dupe it, what we would do is we would imprint it, which puts a save state on this exact item. Now this is what I meant when I was talking about item ID. Every single unique item in this game has an actual item ID tied to it. So if I dupe an item, that means that it's a new item which has a completely new item ID, uh, which is why this duping method is technically not breaking TOS. It's actually within terms of use. Uh, GGG has mentioned it multiple times. This is actually how it was intended to be used. So what we do is we imprint it and then we're going to wriggle it. When we wriggle it, it's going to turn into a three mod item, but it still has the same item ID that is linked to it. Then we are going to split it. Once we split it, technically it should have a one in six or one in nine, I can't quite remember, odds that the one that drops on the ground would have plus three range and physical damage over time, or sorry, increased physical damage. And if it did, that would be a successful split. Now, it should also have a one in so many to just drop plus three range or just the 179 or just the new mod that we just regaled, right? But because of that small little uh, detail where every time that you, sp you split a, uh, an item with an odd number of mods, the highest number of mods will always drop on the ground, meaning if we split a three mod item, the one that drops on the ground will always have two mods. That brings the odds of actually getting this Merciless Jewel Foil of the Essence to uh, successfully dupe to a one in three chance, which is really not that bad, considering that if you were to actually try to make a new one of these, it would cost you a ridiculous amount of currency. Let's just put it that way. Something that I'll be mentioning later on in the video when I showcase how this works. Um, so we would go ahead and imprint, wriggle, split. If the one dot drops on the ground is the Merciless Jeweled Foil of the Essence, that means that the new item which was created uh, basically is what we want. The old item, which was before that a Merciless Jeweled Foil of the Essence, which we regaled, now is going to be stuck on your altar. And on your altar, just sitting there, it will have the one random mod which you regaled. Now, because this item is the old item ID, and it's actually what's linked to the imprint, but you can imprint, imprint back that item using that imprint from your initial um, imprint beast. And it's gonna take that one random regal mod and it's gonna turn it back into a merciless jewel foil of the essence, meaning you now have two of them, right? And you can do this infinitely. Now, this has always been very, very powerful. I mean, this guy, which was the first person to go public with it, duped his way to an item that was worth something like 14 mirrors. I myself made 30, my buddy made 50 in the following leagues. And now it's been used by groups in, in recent leagues in Harvest. Uh, it was used by a certain group. Now in Heist, it changed to another group. And it's still the current one that's been doing this on a whole other level. And they're doing, instead of what I did with one item, they're duping all the bases they can think of and they are printing mirrors like there is no tomorrow. So congratulations to them for picking up on this strategy and understanding uh, you know, how this actually works because it is obviously not very uh, intuitive whatsoever. Now that we've mentioned this, let's go ahead and give you guys an example when I say uh, these bases are typically nearly impossible to make, but they're actually being made for very uh, little. So the example that I decided to give here is going to be this Citadel bow, this Citadel bow, that, sorry, Citadel bow here, which is a very good bow for the current meta bleed bow gladiator build. Now this has the T1 damage over time multiplier and T1 physical damage, uh, flat physical damage, which is flaring, and then the bleed mod from the Elder, and it is being sold for 55 exalts. Now this is technically not a bad price for this item in any league outside of Harvest, but in Harvest, this is an absolute giga scam 
uh, and I'll be showcasing to you guys why that is real shortly. So before that though, I want to show you guys how ridiculously hard it would be able uh, to it would be to be able to make this base now the base that i'm talking about is the t1 damage over time multiplier with the flaring on a blue base a prefix and a suffix one that is typically very very hard to get the flaring in this case and one that's not so bad the liquefaction now the difference here though is that physical flaring uh, sorry flaring has a physical tag which means we can harvest craft it damage over time multiplier has no tag whatsoever which means it cannot be harvest crafted so I'll be giving you guys two different methods of coming up with this base. Um, but before that, I want to show you guys how difficult this would be to actually make if this whole duping thing did not exist. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at a bow and we're going to look at a um, an elder bow. And we're going to look at the odds of chaos spamming into this. Now, obviously, this is not a good method, but just to showcase the ridiculous number here, I'm going to do damage over time multiplier. Uh, so as you can see, the only tag is damage, therefore it can't be targeted with harvest. And the odds of actually chaos spamming into these three mods is 1.7 million chaos. Now you could argue that fossils might be a better, uh, a better way to go, so we're going to go ahead and compute the best selection of fossils, and we are going to come up with some very similar results, maybe even worse to be completely honest. So let's go ahead and look at the cost efficiency one. It would take 69,000 attempts of dense jagged and sanctified to come out with this role here so 1.5 million chaos sure it's a little bit cheaper than chaos spamming but i don't think anybody can afford this to be quite frank um especially buying these 69 individual fossils sounds like it would be uh if not impossible the biggest pain in the ass i've ever heard of <laughs> so let's get into how these are actually crafted uh, and why the 55x five, uh, the, the 55x tag makes no real sense to me. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to look at a bow, and I'm going to look at the odds of augmenting a certain mod. Now the first thing I want to look at is what's the odds of augmenting flaring uh, if I have the damage over time multiplier, which would be alt spammed. So I would alt spam the damage over time multiplier. And then I want to look what's the odds if I have only an open prefix because of course it's a magic item and I am re-rolling physical on harvest and I want flaring. It would take me on average 83 physical re-rolls. 83 remove add fizz on average to actually get this flaring to show up. Now this is not too big of an investment realistically we're talking at about 80 exalts 80 well it's about one exalt for each of those i guess so 83 exalts uh, but the bigger problem here is the actual supply of harvest craft is very low even in things like discord communities where you can buy them from other players so this is kind of problematic if this was harvest 83 would have been an easy clap you could have easily bought all of those within an hour or two and you'd be good to go not only that they were much cheaper back then so Let's talk about the other method that you can do. Uh, you can do this, and that is going to be the preferred method, uh, which has been used pretty much ever since harvest was not a thing, ever since this whole thing even started. And what is, to, in my opinion, in most cases, still the preferred method, and that is going to be to imprint, uh, imprint spam your item. So what we're going to look here is basically the odds of actually imprint spamming the lesser of the rare mods, and that lesser rare mod is going to be uh, damage over time multiplier. So in this case, what we would be looking at is the odds of actually, um, the odds of actually taking this bow here, alt spamming for flaring. Uh, so alt spam for flaring, and then the odds of actually augmenting damage over time multiplier of a T1. So as you can see, it would take on average 255 augments. Now the way to do this is that you would take the blue base, the blue bow, probably six link, probably has the white sockets, right? And you would actually imprint it after you've chaos or sorry alteration spammed for nothing but flaring, and you would augment it. It would take 255 tries on average to get the T1 damage over time multiplier. Now, once you actually get this, you're basically done. But the way to do this is to imp uh, to augment. And if you fail, so let's say you augment like attack speed or I don't know, life gain on kill or something that you don't care about, you're going to annul. And then so long as you don't hit the flaring, you can just augment again, aug annul, augment, annul, just over and over again. And if you do the math on this and you take the string of numbers and bring it to infinity, that means that you have to basically cut this 
uh, average in half because on average you're going to get twice the amount of tries which means it would take on average 120 ish imprints to be able to do this now the current price of imprints is about uh, 0.5 exalts each in bulk which means it would cost you on average a little over 30 exalts uh, right to be able to uh, sorry a little over 60 exalts to be able to hit this mod uh, now once you've hit this mod you essentially have a bow that'll look like this the mod the t1 dot and the flaring on a magic bow the first step and the very important step is to make sure that you dupe this bow using what i uh the the strategy i mentioned earlier where you're going to imprint regal split for a one in three chance to actually get a second one once you have a second one at this point your investment is higher than 60 exalts uh which now you might be thinking 55 exalt means you actually lost money but the thing is you can start making these like like a factory almost like you can make a ridiculous amount of those in a very little time and i'll be explaining how that's done uh, right now so once you've duped the bow and you have your actual legitimate base you're going to want to make sure that you put that aside because you never want to lose that obviously you you have to put some significant amount of currency to be able to make the base but once you've made the base this is when you start just rolling in money the reason for that is that once you've made the base the next thing you're going to do with your extra one that you just duped is you're going to imprint it yet again now once you imprint it you're going to use or buy the craft uh, add a random influence modifier to a weapon or if you were doing gloves or something it would be to armor whatever really and you're going to do this until you get uh, elder because this this bleed mod here is an elder mod so if ever you did this right and you were to get shaper influence which is a one in six to get the elder mod you would imprint back and then imprint again so that's another three exalts to actually be able to get the elder mod once you have the elder mod though uh you've you're pretty much done at that point what you need to do is you'd have the damage over time right you'd have the physical and you would have an elder bow now you need to imprint it yet again almost every step of the way you need to imprint and you can't just forget about imprinting because a single wrong turn and your item is dead so let me explain why you would imprint it yet again so if you had your physical and your t1 dot on an elder bow the next thing you want to do is force on this bleed mod fortunately for us there's only three prefixes for the elder and they're pretty much equally weighted which means the odds of getting the bleed mod is a one in three if you don't have any open suffixes so what you're going to do after you imprint these two mods here on an elder bow is regal now if you regal something that is removable with harvest you're basically done all you have to do at that point is remove that one mod and continue on if you you actually regal something which you can't remove so for example strength or something or dexterity or whatever you would have to try to annul it and if you fail well you know at that point what you have to do imprint it back and imprint yet again now once you've done this and you have a rare version at that point of the t1 dot and your t1 flaring with an elder bow all you need to do is fill up the suffixes the easiest way to do that is just going to be to multi-mod if you multi-mod you can have up to three craft and mods that is a suffix and you have attack speed quality that is also a suffix two exalt one divine um next thing you know you are going to put the physical damage this is also one exalt uh, and then you only have one open prefix left since your other prefix is your t1 flaring and the only mod you'll be missing is bleed bow uh the bleed mod sorry so what do you do augment random influence modifier and the only thing it can hit is a prefix so you have a one in three chance if you fail and let's say you get the 100 percent to deal more poison damage all you have to do is remove and re-add a new influence modifier takes on average two tries since you have the augment so a total of three these are about like two or three x a pop so let's just say anywhere between six and nine exalts investment to get the bleed mod so if we were to run down this item here we have let's just say let's just say nine x let's just go with the higher uh the higher price nine x to get this two x here so that's 11 x that's another exalt that's 12 three exalts to get the uh the uh, elder so that's uh, another that's up to 15 and then obviously all those imprints along the way so let's just say another 4x there so let's just say 19 but these are being sold for 55 now 
you also need to redupe the base every single time which would probably cost you like four or five exalts or so so let's just say 20 ish exalts so these guys if ever they sell one of these bow are making between 25 and 35 exalt of pure profit per bow sold because they went through the trouble of making the base that i explained how to make which means if the base was on average 60 exalts as i mentioned earlier it would cost uh, it would take them selling two of these bows at around this price to make the entirety of their money back and then some profit that's it which is absolutely insane um and now this is one item right but if you actually went through this guy's listings i i'm just going to give you guys a quick rundown on which of them are actually dupe bases and it's very very obvious to me this is a dupe base the dupe base here is the Aurion mod. Again, just like the Liquefaction mod, it's a uh, very hard mod to get. Same thing for an Essence mod, also very hard to get. So the dupe base here is probably with Intelligence. So T1 Intelligence suffix alongside the Aurion mod, mod, which is only from Aurion Jewelry, and the rest is only, uh, pretty much going to be um, Harvest Crafted minus the Dexterity. That's one thing that they probably just got lucky on, uh, but quite frankly, not the best stat in the world to have there. A resistance would actually be much better. Um, these uh, chess pieces are not applied to this. Chess pieces are made by going with a blank slate and then working your way up because pretty much every single thing that you see here uh, can be forced. So this can be forced, this can be forced, this can be forced, this can be forced. The only thing is the all resistance can't be. So um, yeah, needless to say, uh, you start with a blank slate and you just go step by step. If you know how to do it, easy. This uh, do base T1 damage or T1 fire damage carbonizing alongside uh, bow attacks fire two additional arrows. So that means that they have a base with just these two mods on a magic bow. Uh, again, doesn't apply to this. Uh, bows, very, very popular choice. The do base here is the bow attacks fire two additional arrows alongside the plus two level of socketed bow gems. Uh, this is very obvious to see because you can force on the level of socketed gems. And you can force on attack speed and crit chance, and this is just a crafted mod. The hard mod to get here is the bow attacks fire two additional arrows. Getting the plus two with imprint spamming is very easy because it doesn't have a tag, which means no harvest solution there. Uh, obviously, boots don't apply to this. This is also a dupe base. The dupe base is the Puhuarte mod, uh, which is a temple mod, which gives you the 50% increased damage with hits against shield enemies. And my guess here is that they have the base with T1 life. Uh, so they can easily get this T1 life alongside the, uh, T the, the damage with hits against shield enemies every single time. And then the rest is just, what do you know, harvest crafted. Uh, again, chest pieces don't matter. Uh, another bow here, same thing, plus two arrows, plus two bow. The rest can be easily uh, all forced. Uh, same thing here. This one is the same uh, the same bow that I actually showed earlier, right? The fire with the plus two arrows. But this time it looks like they, they went for a shaper base with attack speed double damage, which can also be forced on with harvest crafting. Um, and you'll see that basically if you were to go through this guy's profile, uh, there you go. Actually, this is a dupe base right here. Uh, this is actually a bad dupe base, so I'm guessing they made this on accident. They probably regaled flaring and then they split into it without really wanting to uh, because, quite frankly, this is not a good base. I don't think anybody really cares about a flaring physical bow. Uh, sorry, a flaring uh, thicket bow. That's just not really good. Uh, there's much, much better bases when it comes to physical bows. Uh, that's kind of just... Yeah, I don't see why you'd want that. Uh, Thicket is the highest attack speed bow in the game, and that is going to be useful for builds like Toxic Rain, which don't care any like at all about physical damage. Um, here we have the fire again. Now the fire is basically probably for elemental hit bows, I would imagine. Uh, here's another dupe base. Very easy to see. What we have here is T1 physical damage and T1 attack speed. T1 attack speed is very easy to actually imprint spam. It only takes an average of like 80... Um, attempts which is like 40 imprints so 20-ish exalt to get the base going which is the t1 physical damage with the t1 attack speed so again very easy oh see exactly what i was saying earlier this elrion with the t1 intelligence i could have i was willing to bet that this was the base that they had and there you have it again so you would start with the elrion jewelry on a steel ring uh which you get from divination cards and then you would imprint spam until you get the intelligence and this is what i meant when i said that you can't split an influence uh, an influenced item or an item which has um a um 
an enchantment and this chilling towers deal 25 percent is actually an enchant uh, so let's say this ring was actually up for sale and it didn't have the influence and it was sold for 40 exalt and it had just this this would be a big scam because you if you bought this base would not be able to dupe it anymore you would just get the actual uh two mods and then you would have to build your own ring from that point you would not be able to dupe it for other people so this is a way that these people will actually use to uh, protect their bases this is another dupe base here we have t1 damage over time multiplier uh, alongside uh flaring which by the way i'm not uh i'm not trying to hate on them for doing this i did the exact same thing back in legion when i was doing these foils what i used to do is i would craft them all the way up and then i would be scrapped them to 30 percent quality even if they were already 30 percent quality because then they would be corrupted meaning nobody could split into my base and nobody could just steal my work uh, very easily because as I showed it's not that easy to make those dupe bases and when you have as many as these guys do clearly they want to keep them uh, keep those bases for themselves and after that we just have some regular crafts which is clearly just some uh, belts which were was uh, were fossil crafted with some um, harvest crafting as well as some uh, add random influence item mobile 86 stigens uh, not much to talk about there and the rest is not going to matter but what do you know that's another dupe base right here we have flaring t1 physical damage with celebration t1 attack speed and this is another dupe base yet again uh so as you can see there's a lot of these dupe bases i'm pretty sure this one is one as well uh what do you know uh you have it yet again t1 physical damage with t1 attack speed dupe base uh you can easily print these 30 exalts they literally cost you less than 10 exalt to make um uh, absolutely absolutely easy to make some ridiculous profit and when i say ridiculous profit i'm talking about thousands of exalts that are being made by groups that are taking advantage of this strategy which was pretty much all thanks to this guy called epsi underscore d2 which really uh put this whole strategy on um on the map so hey shout out to him and um that's it hopefully you guys enjoyed i know that this was a very technical video lots of details lots of me talking you're probably gonna have to pause it a million times and take some notes if you even want to consider doing this uh but now that the knowledge is out there hopefully you hopefully at least one or two of you guys will go out with this knowledge and uh you know do something with it make some money with it and uh that's that's pretty much why i made these videos so the next video is going to be the first episode of the um casual exile series so hopefully uh, some of you guys are looking forward to that but before i go as always i want to say a huge thank you to my supporters johnny michael kluzi zarachi Lero, gaikona jw player scott justin alex ollie matt kevin hayden bitizen and axel as well of course anybody else who wishes to remain anonymous and anybody else who is supporting me in the past i really hope you guys enjoyed this very technical video if you like it uh let me know in the comment section and uh maybe i'll you know show you guys some other very very obscure uh, crafting strategies and stuff like that uh later on so that'll be matthew signing out until the next one peace